Hey everyone and welcome to Sunday in the studio. It's a damp rainy day in in North Georgia uh, and I thought well it's a perfect time to come and, and do a, a demonstration video for you. And I've had some requests this past week for a spring landscape painting. So it's perfect timing, beginning of spring, to paint an early spring landscape. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing, let me just show you my small crummy photo, which is what I like to work from. You see it? Okay. Small crummy photo. It's a red bud tree, basically, and everything else is just starting to bloom out. Um, some evergreen. So it's really going to be more, hopefully, the idea is it's about the tree. And it's about a kind of a cool, damp spring day. And the, the tree is just giving so much beautiful color. That's the idea. And... Um, what I'm going to do is challenge myself because I like a challenge. I got this set this week. Can you see this one? This is um, Great American Artworks Pastels. It's Richard McKinley 91 piece uh, landscape set. And I thought, well, this might be a really good set. Like, I need more pastels, but it would be a really good set to fill my plein air box. And I'm going to be doing that in another video. I'm going to be taking these out and putting them in my Heilman box. Um, but I thought it would be a really good start and so it's always good to when if you get a set and you think you want to use it for a lot of different paintings is to give it a try and see what you can paint just using the set so what I did was I went ahead and did a small color study oops here we go you see the small color study so that I could test out the colors and I might have to supplement it up I might have to add a pink to get the really vibrancy of the red bud. So we'll have to see how that goes. I also thought it would be fun if I did a watercolor underpainting. And I went ahead and did that already so that we wouldn't have to wait for it to dry. If you're interested in learning more about underpaintings, I'm going to be talking about underpaintings in um, in a few months on my Patreon page. So it's uh, patreon.com slash Karen Margulis. This month we're working on color. Um, so if you're interested in more videos, more step-by-step -step demos, handouts, and, and weekly challenges, Patreon is the place to go to. Now, excuse me for just a second. We've been working this week on color schemes, and, and more specifically, the analogous complementary color scheme, which is one of my favorites for landscape. So what I did was I took my photo and my little color study, and I decided what would be the analogous colors that I was going to be using. So I said I would be using anywhere from green over to blue-green. And what that told me was the complement's going to be red-violet and a little bit of orange-yellow and blue-violet would be the discords or the spices. So I thought it would be really smart if I put these colors in the underpainting and then I'll put all the greens on top. So that's what I did with the watercolor underpainting. I put a little orange, yellow orange. I put some blue green, blue violet, and of course the pink for the tree. Uh, I put that down. So this is the watercolor underpainting. And now I'm ready to begin the actual painting part. So I'm going to step into my, go right into the box. They're not organized in any way. Normally I organize my palette by um, category, you know, so the darks, the sky colors, the flower colors. This, I have to actually just kind of have to pick and choose what I want. It's not the ideal way to work, but sometimes it's good to challenge your brain to work that way. So the first thing I'm going to do is reestablish those darker areas. So I'm going to go in where these evergreen trees are and I'm going to put the darker green value kind of where at, at the base of these trees a little bit up a little bit more now great american pastels if you haven't worked with them before they're they're very soft and um i think some people cut consider them on the on the buttery side that's that's a description that i hear a lot that they feel buttery or or um some people say greasy if they don't like them, uh, but I, I think they're creamy. But because they're soft, you have to make sure you use a very light touch with them. So I just did two layers now of a green and a dark blue, uh, red violet, 
And now I'm going to add my third layer, which is a, a, a dark value of blue. Another thing about the Great American Pastels, when you first start working with them, they are not per they're they're not perfectly uh, what's the word I'm looking for straight on the edges. So you might get some marks that are unexpected. Don't let it stress you out. You just you're going to cover some of that up, so it's not really going to be the end of the world. Like so, you don't get a completely smooth mark with them because they're not perfectly straight. I I added this dark pathway that's going to be leading up through our grass and I want to establish that underneath the lighter grass color so that there'll be some something for all the grass to hold on to. This is what I consider the dirt. Alright, so now I'm going to add some of the distant greens. So I'm using a um, kind of light value dullish grayed down green kind of behind the bigger trees so that they look like they go into the distance a little bit. Here's another one that's a little bit lighter value. And I'm just, just trying to establish this tree line before I go and do the, the background. Now I want to add a little bit of um, a brighter green. It's actually a little bit of a warmer green to some of these trees. And really the fun part about doing a watercolor underpainting is that if, if you are successful, you can allow a lot of that underpainting to peek through. So um, it's not always easy to do. You get carried away and before you know it, you've covered it all up. But it is something that I strive for anyways. I want to break up these tree shapes so that they're not all so rounded and, and boring. I will use the sky color to, to do that further. Right, now I want to establish a little bit more of the pink of that redbud tree. So I'm using a darker, brighter pink. This color I pulled out of my box. It's, it's not in the uh, Great American set. There's one pink in there, but it's a little bit lighter value, and I wanted to um, start with a darker value. And you see that I'm moving the, that hot pink around. I put a little bit here, a little bit here, and I'm going to add a little bit into the grass. It's going to peek through, and the reason why is I don't want there just to be one blob of pink right in the middle of the painting, which actually reminds me I'm going to pull it over a little bit more so it doesn't look so centered. Now once I've done that, I've got pretty much the tree shapes established. I'm going to go ahead and do the sky. And in this uh, photo, or this particular day, what it reminded me of is it was a um, cool, much like today, a cool and rainy, stormy, um, spring day. So I'm using some cooler kind of grayed down colors to do the sky. So I'm not using a nice bright blue because I want to get the feeling of, of that coldness or coolness in the sky, that spring um, cold, cool sky. So I'm using kind of grayed down green, gray greens. What else can I use? I don't want to use something too bright and cheerful because that's not the kind of day this was. And as I go closer to the um, horizon, I'm going to introduce just a little touch of a, a, a pink. And also, there was another pink in here. Here it is. Nah, here it is. I want to introduce some pink to the sky. Uh, and I'll talk about why in just a minute. So hang on to that idea. So I put some pink in the sky, and now, let's see, I need to have the, um, here we go. I'm coming to the horizon, and now I'm going to use a pale, kind of yellowy color. And if you'll notice what I'm doing as I'm putting in the sky marks, I'm breaking up the shape of the trees. 
so that way that they look a little bit uh, more interesting than, than the rounded shapes that I had when I started out. So I'm bringing that sky color down just to break up the tree line a little bit, make it more interesting. And actually that color there made the sky brighter as kind of as if the storm was breaking up. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about the, the type of day or the type of mood that I'm trying to create. I'm also making my sky marks kind of point down towards this red bud tree, which is going to be the star. So I'm just making some sky marks that help lead the viewer's eye to the tree. All right, so now I have the sky in place. What I want to do now is work a little bit on the ground. And before I do that, I already put some pink down there. I want to reinforce those dirt colors that I had. So I think I'm going to put a little bit more. That might be too bright. I'm going to put a little, some more pinks, but this is a duller kind of mauvey pink. And I'm putting this color down to... I will cover it up with green because it, there was definitely green growing the green grasses. But I want to establish what I call the dirt color before I do the green. And what does this do? It just hopefully will make the green more interesting. So it's not going to be just a very green painting. I want there to be little bits and pieces of other colors that will make it more interesting. While I, would do, while I was doing that, what I noticed was this tree shape was still like a, bo a ball. It was not a very interesting, pretty shape. So I'm, I just went back with some sky color to uh, change it just slightly. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the um, foliage color. And a lot of times I will do that. If I see something that's bothering me, uh, I will go ahead and change it right away, even if that means, you know, I'm, I'm moving away from what the area of my focus, because otherwise I might forget. So if, if I'm painting and I see an area that really needs to be addressed, I'll say, oh, okay, just take a break and fix that while you're thinking of it. And, and I think that usually works out better, because sometimes I'll forget about what, what I wanted to do. All right, so now I've got my dirt in place. Now it's time to put the grass color. I'm going to start at the back of the field, and I'm going to start with a lighter, cooler green. And I really would like to make layers in this kind of little woodland scene. So I, I, I don't want all the trees to look like they're on the same plane. So I want there to be some, some uh, grass kind of behind some of these trees. So I'm using this cooler green just to use little marks to break up that area so it looks like the field is further back. And then I can put some grass more in the front area. I'm using an, another kind of very light uh, coolish green, more of a neutral type green. And another one. So far, I'm really enjoying the colors that are in this set. Look at this really nice, this is a really nice spring green color. It's got a yellow, a yellow um, green feeling to it, but it's not overpowering. It still feels natural. So I'm just picking up these greens and using them. Um, I, I had, this was the green that's not in the box. I'm going to put it in right now. This is a, what I would consider a traditional grass green. Um, and this color was not in the box. So when I set up my uh, plein air set, I will put in a color like this. This is, a, it's a nice uh, middle value, bright green, but it's still a natural looking green. I'll throw some of it up in the trees just a little bit as well. Now, I don't know, it's hard to, um, for you probably to see, but the way that I'm making my marks are in the distance I made horizontal bands like this so that it would lay flat. But as I get up closer to the foreground of this scene, I'm using vertical marks. 
because this is the way the grass is growing. And I'm using chunks, so bits and pieces, so that I don't have all the same color green, because any area of green, any area of grass, is not all going to be the exact same shade of green. There's always going to be little bits and pieces of, of other colors in there. So I'm trying to create that mix in the grass. And I'm also trying to create marks that help lead us to the tree. And now it would be time, uh, time to address the tree itself. So I already established that darker um, pink. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the pink that's in the, uh, in the box. And the one thing about the red buds is that <clears throat> the flowers appear before the foliage. So what you really see on the branches are those little flowers. So I want to just kind of give the illusion of all these little bits and pieces of flowers. So I'm making little tiny little dots. This tree is a little bit too dense, so I'm going to have to break it up a little bit. But again, I would much rather uh, have the ability to carve into it than to have it um, too spotty. So I have one big shape. Now I'm going to take the sky color and break up the tree shape a little bit more so that I can give it a little bit more of a feeling of a delicate, delicate, uh, spring tree. Let's add some hints of trees that are further back and I'm doing that by choosing a gray down blue and that is so that we can feel like maybe there's just another layer of trees back there so it's not just this one dimensional thing. And I'm looking now and I see that that um, tr tree shape is still round it just, my brain wants to make it round, so I'm, I'm having to fight to break that up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few more sky holes to that. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to take out my, I pulled out a few, um, I'll just put them in my hand, a few new pastels. And I'm going to use these for the finishing touches. So the first thing I want to do is establish some, uh, whoops. Let me see those again. Um, they're just some dark, uh, some uh, assortment of harder pastels. I'm going to use the one to put in the trunk and the branches for the red bud, red bud tree. Oops, that got a little too thick. Let's fix that mark. So I've got a trunk here coming to the ground, and a couple of branches sticking out, and I just want nice, soft painterly marks. I'm going to add some trunks to some of these other trees. And one thing that I really liked about this scene is that there were some bare trees that they hadn't gotten any foliage on them yet. So I'm going to use the new pastel to kind of draw in some of those uh, bare tree branches just kind of sticking up, up over the sky like that. I don't want it to look like bookends, so I've got to make sure that I have unequal and you know what would be kind of fun is if I, if some of them were just starting to get some green at the tips. That will really help give it that feeling of spring. So I'm using a, a really bright, isn't this a great spring color? So I'm using it just to put in a few little specks of, uh, at the tips of the branches. So it kind of looks like, up oh, these are starting to burst into spring color. What else do I have here? I have um, a pink, so I could go in and I could go in and kind of refine some of these little, um, where some of the flowers are blooming. And I could put some little pink flowers in the ground, but I, I'm going to reserve, I'm going to do something else. So hang on to that thought. I'm going to use the new pastel to, to kind of, uh, Scribble in some grassy marks so that way the viewer can know that this is grass. I don't have to put in every blade of grass, but I can hit at a, a few pieces. And then that way we say, oh, okay, I know what that is. That's grass. Because uh, one thing that I like to say is suggest and then let the viewer do the rest. All you need to do is suggest a little bit and the viewer's eye will fill in the rest. 
And so I think the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of spice. And if you remember when I showed you the color wheel, the spices were going to be a yellow orange and a blue violet. So if I take, let's see, there's, here's a nice blue violet. I'm going to put a little uh, blue violet bit at the bottom of the trunk here and maybe just in the trunk and maybe on this tree here. And then some yellow orange. Why not have a few little bits of yellow orange flowers in the, in the meadow? And I want to put them so that they form this kind of lead in for the viewer's eye so that they can see these nice little yellow orange flowers. I'll put a couple brighter ones up by the tree, like so. The, the, uh, traditionally, the discords or the spices, I like to call them, will be, sent, will be put in small amounts near your center of interest, which is supposed to be this tree right here. And so there you have it. I started with a nice watercolor underpainting, which kind of gave me a head start. And I and simply used this set of um, Great American Artwork Pastels. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's demo. It was a lot of fun painting for you today.